this video, we're going to look at basic file input and output using C. This will just be a quick intro. Upcoming videos will show examples of putting these ideas into practice. There are just a few points to remember when working with files in C. First, you need to make sure you pound include the standard lib header file. This gives you access to the file handling functions. You open a file in C using the fopen function. fopen takes a string giving the file name and another giving the mode that you want to use for accessing the file. There are three common modes. Mode R lets you read from the file. Mode W lets you write to the file, replacing any data that was already there. And Mode A lets you append to the file, leaving the original data and adding new data at the end of the file. fopen returns a file pointer that you can use to work with the file on disk. C provides several functions for reading from files and writing to them. We'll look at the details of that shortly. Finally, you close a file in C using the fclose function, passing it the pointer that you got from fopen. Here's a basic example showing opening and closing a file. We declare a variable named infile whose type is a pointer to a file. Then we try to open the file named myfile.txt for reading. Remember the mode R for read. Now C doesn't have exception handling like Python or Java, so we need to check that we received a valid pointer. If the pointer is null, then the file couldn't be opened for some reason. This program just self-destructs in that case. It uses the exit function to shut itself down. After the if statement, we know that the file was successfully opened, so here we could read the data. I left that part out for now. Finally, we use fclose to close the file, passing it the pointer we got when we opened the file. Here are the three main C functions for reading from a file. Get C might remind you of a function you've seen before. It's a lot like get char, but it reads from a file instead of from standard input. Here's an example. Assuming in file points to an open file like on the last slide, then this reads the next character from in file and stores it in the variable C. fscanf is for formatted reading. It's a lot like scanf. Here's an example of fscanf. This example declares two int variables, x and y. Then it asks fscanf to read from in file, looking for two integers separated by a comma. That's what this format string says. We give fscanf the addresses of x and y so it can store the values where we can get to them. Finally, fscanf returns a count of the number of variables that were filled in. In this example, we could check that count was two afterwards and we'd know that the read succeeded. fgets is used to read a whole line from a file. Since we need to declare the size of strings in C before we use them, this is just a bit tricky. Here's an example. This example declares a character array, buff, of length 1000, using a pound define to avoid magic numbers. Then we call fgets, asking it to read from in file and put the next line in buff. But we also tell fgets that buff can only take 1,000 characters, so it won't give us too many if the line is longer than that. fgets is smart and writes a null character to the end of buff, so we can use it as a C string. Here are the three main C functions for writing to a file. Put C is the file output version of put char. Here's an example. Assuming that out file points to a file that we opened for writing or appending, then this writes an R to the end of the file. fprintf should look familiar. It's almost exactly like printf. Here's an example. This example declares and initializes two float variables, x and y. Then it asks fprintf to add a line to the file formatting both x and y to use six spaces with one digit after the decimal point. So this example would add text like this to the end of the file. Finally, fputs writes a given string to the end of the given file. Here's an example. This is pretty straightforward, but there's one gotcha here. In fprintf, the file pointer was the first argument. In fputs, the file pointer is the last argument. If you try to use the wrong order, the compiler will catch it, so it isn't a big deal. We'll look at several examples of using the file writing and reading functions in upcoming videos. So that's all for this one. Until next time, I'm Kurt. Catch you later.